Cloud Gaming is here. Yeah, so Cloud Gaming is here it will be my title when the banners actually come out and I pull for them. So if you see any other content creator trying to use that, let them know that I have called dibs on it. So anyways, the 4.4 phase 1 banners are out. Let's 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 see. Let's see what they actually are. Let's see what it's all about. So I will just bear. Notices. Event. Hoyovers, what the fuck? What the fuck? The first time you decide to put Faruzan on a banner that's not wonder, you do it right, right before shows, but what the fuck? Um, that's a, uh, that's, that's a uh, very, very, um, what do you call it? Um, that's a uh, very interesting banner design, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because like, Shao's constellations are very bad. So you pull for Xianyun for your Shao and then you get Farzan for free, I guess. That's the logic, I suppose. But still, it's, it, it, it's, it's just so weird. Like, first time they put her outside of a Wanderer banner and it's on Xianyun's banner. And the, the bad thing about it is that uh, Shao's banner is just 21 days after this. So yeah but like sure it, it, it makes sense at least okay anyways let's get to the banner reviews now let's talk about the four stars that are on the banner so first up we have noel now noel is not a character that you build because you need she's a character that you build because you want and ignore her elemental mastery i i i, I swear my build around a little ignore that anyway so yeah noel's a good character if you want to play her Let's look at some constellations that you might want to aim for if you are going to be pulling on this banner. So first up, C1. Now this used to be one of Noel's bad constellations, but now it's become our second best constellation because Farina's release made Noel a lot better and this obviously just helps you generate fanfare twice as efficiently because now instead of relying on RNG with a 50 for 50 chance of healing, you heal your entire party every single hit, which is pretty damn good. Her C2 is nothing crazy, but like, um, sure, charge attack gives you better AA consolidation, so that's cool, it gives you faster healing, so that's also cool, you generate more fanfare, and with the red horn, I, if I remember correctly, it's also the optimal combo for maximum DPS output, C3 is just shield levels, Jet also scales the heal, so I guess, C4 is also a kind of nice constellation, it's a 400% of Noel's attack as geo damage, so yeah, you shield kind of explodes, it's it's cool and all, some nice extra damage. C5 is burst levels, nothing too crazy. And her C6 is the best constellation. I do do I even have to say anything about this? Like <laughs> this just takes Noel from a 5 to a 9. <laughs> it's straight up. Second one, Farzan. Now obviously she is the dedicated animal buffer, animal support for your wanderer, Shao, Hazo, or your DPS Kazuo, or whatever the hell you want to play as an animal DPS. Her constellations are pretty good. As a C0 unit, I don't think she's that good. So it's kind of nice having her on the banner so you can potentially get some constellations. Because at C0, she's probably not even worth using in a lot of the teams over some other sub DPS. Her C1 is kind of whatever, doesn't do anything. Her C2 is good because it gives you 100% uptime on her buffs and it makes it so that Shao works a lot better with her. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Her C3 doesn't do anything. Her C4 doesn't do anything, <laughs> and uh, her C5 doesn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, it, it's some very tiny amount of animal damage bonus, but the scaling on her burst for the animal damage bonus, it's it's very bad, so it doesn't really matter that much. Her C6 is the holy shit, this is such a good constellation. <laughs> you get 40% crit damage, animal crit damage, and then she also generates a shit ton of energy, and she also has some nice grouping with this constellation. So yeah, if you are somewhere in between here from c2 to c5 then she's pretty good to have on this banner because her cc is very much one of the best four star constellations you can get without c6 farzan and with c6 farzan are two different units i'm telling you let's also talk about gaming do not say gaming i've clarified so many times already i don't want to do, go over this again but like sure so gaming is a pretty good four star but i can't really comment on his strength because uh, you kind of have to see my pre-release -pre for that and i do not want to leak stuff in a banner review video so yeah go watch the pre-release if you want uh, stuff on gaming and how strong he is 
but overall in my personal opinion he's kind of a cool unit and he seems pretty fun to play he has good animation so yeah that might be worth it for you now let's also talk about the weapon banner the five stars on this weapon banner can be good or bad depending upon what player you are if you are someone who is going for nahida and her signature then maybe this is not the kind of weapon banner you would have hoped for because Crane's Echoing Call doesn't really do anything for your account. However, if you are someone who is going to pull for Cloud Retainer, then this is a pretty good weapon banner. Because not only is her signature very very good, but also a thousand floating dreams is up there in one of the better 5 star options that you can lose your 50-50 to in case you don't win the signature option, right? So that's a pretty good banner for you. Overall, the signature is really only useful on Xianyun, but on her, it is one of the best weapons in its niche. Like, it's about as good as the key of Khajani Sud for Nilu, if that gives you some perspective. The Thousand Floating Dreams, however, even though it's not the best for anybody, even for Naida, it's technically best in slot if you are on the support build. But in damage comparisons, it kind of falls in the same boat as the Kagura's Verity. However, it is still a nice support weapon that you can use neither as well as other Catalyst characters that you have on the team like Sucrose for example. So it is always a nice weapon to have if you end up losing your 50 to it. But overall nothing I would say you should be aiming for. The 4 stars are nothing too crazy. The Sacrificial series is kind of whatever, it's kind of okay all have some users that can use them pretty well even though the weapons themselves are not super universal having them on a weapon banner is pretty good because all of their refinements make them much better weapons as a general rule most of the rotations that you do tend to be 20 seconds in a lot of the times and having r3 or above on your sacrificial weapons means that you can get their proc once every rotation Otherwise, at lower refinements, you will have to wait and get it every other rotation. So having them on a banner is nice because their refinements are pretty nice. As for the Lithic Spear, something similar applies to it as well. You only use a Lithic Spear if you do not have other options available for your damage focused character like Shao, like Raiden I guess to some extent. But even then I would suggest you use the Fab Lens or Catch on her. But if you are using the Lithic Spear, then it is also a weapon that gets significantly better with refinements. The crit rate buff it gets significantly better from R1 to R5. So it is one of the best weapon series to have on a banner where you can get their its refinements. Now let's get to the conclusions. What do I overall think of these banners? So for the character banner, I would say it's pretty good because all of these four stars kind of scale pretty well with their constellations. So having them on a banner is good for you if you want to use them. For the weapon banner, a similar thing for the four stars. All of these don't really have that much of a use case. They are not universal weapons like Fav series, but they are good weapons that you might want to use and their refinements make them a lot better. For the 5 stars on the weapon banner, it honestly just depends who you are pulling for. If you are pulling for Nahida, then perhaps this is not the best weapon banner for you. But if you are pulling for Cloud Retainer, then this is one of the better weapon banners. Because a thousand floating dream is one of the better weapons that you can lose your 50-50 to. So I hope I made it clear on what I think about these banners and what the overall value is. Also one last thing, when the day comes, when 4.4 goes live and I pull for Cloud Retainer and Gaming and I test them out. Will you be interested in watching a live stream? I am thinking I might do a live stream, but yeah, let me know in the comments. If you like my video, then like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheryl on the beat.